Good afternoon everyone. This will be my video lecture in Camillian Values and Norms. No? Today it is October 12, 2022. It's a Wednesday afternoon and we will be discussing a new topic which is chapter 3 of the book on deviance, social control, and sanctions. But before I proceed with my lecture for today, uh, there is an announcement. No? Tomorrow, <coughs> we have a class day tomorrow. It's October 13. It's a Thursday. And uh, the reason being, uh, I have moved your class from Friday to Thursday. No? So instead of meeting on Friday, we meet tomorrow, Thursday. No? Same time and the same venue. No? only for this week but next week we will resume with the usual schedule no? <coughs> also uh, tomorrow you will have a quiz in nstp1 as well as in english grammar no? so both sessions in the morning and in the afternoon you will have your quiz so be prepared for the nstp1 we are using this book, no? and I want you to read entirely chapter one because the questions uh, that I will be giving you in your quiz tomorrow will be lifted from this book, chapter one. No? And of course, for the English grammar part, you also have to read from chapters one to five no? here because uh, we are almost through with the first book which uh, I have already discussed up to that part on uh, adverbs, okay? So let us proceed now to the discussion of chapter 3 of your book and we are talking about, what did we say again? We are talking about deviants, we are talking about social control, and then we are talking about what we call sanctions. I think uh, as an overview, I have to define each one so that you will have an idea what deviance is, what social control is, and what sanctions are. Now, when we talk simply, no, by way of an overview, when we talk of deviance, what comes to your mind? No? When you talk of deviance, what is that? Well, this is the act itself. Now, when we talk of deviance, we are talking about the act. And the person who uh, commits a deviance is what we call the deviant. No? Deviant. No? So, this one is the person, deviant. And the act itself is called a deviance. Right? So, simply, when I talk of deviance, I am talking about what? It's a violation, no? It's a violation of something, no? And of course, when we talk of a deviant, we are talking about the violator. <coughs> Clear so far? So, what is it in particular that was violated? Now, when we talk of a violation, we are talking about the violation of social norms, no? I think I have talked about this already, no? Social norms. Uh, these are norms in society, no? And by way of review, what are the major classifications, again, of or, or types of norms? So, we talk about folkways, no? We talk about moors, we talk about taboos, we talk about laws. So it could be, the violation could come from any of these types of, any of these type of norms, no? We call it social norms, no? So simply, when we talk of deviance, no? What the individual is violating is of course the social norms, no? That is the concept of uh, what we call deviance, no? It's uh, an action or behavior that is odd, that is abnormal, 
that is unacceptable. No? Um, this is the behavior or the action that violates social norms because uh, sometimes the it's odd or strange no something that is not within the acceptable norms of behavior no weird so it is odd when we say odd it is something like weird no it is abnormal it is unacceptable behavior okay so of course the violator would be somebody who is acting oddly or strangely or abnormally or something that is unacceptable okay clear so far so if deviance is a violation of course when you have violated something it will what result for the consequence would be to impose what we call a sanction diba? <coughs> If you have violated something, of course, the consequence or the outcome of that, because you are violating something, would be what we call a sanction or sanctions. And sanctions simply would pertain to what we call the penalty. No? You have to be penalized for violating a social norm. No? So, sanction is simply what we call the penalty. Now, what about the other term, which we call, what? What's the other term? We call that social control. No? Because these are the things that we will be discussing in chapter 3. So, what is social control? Well, when we talk of social control, we are talking about the ways no? or means no? to what to prevent any violation no? as simple as that to prevent the commission of a violation no? and who will implement this who will do the social control well of course society in general that's why social no and of course when it is the society that will uh, exercise social control well, of course, we are talking about the government, no? So, remember this. When we talk of social control, I repeat, no? When I talk about social control, I am talking about the ways or the means by which we could prevent the commission of a violation. Violation of a what? Of a social norm or social, uh, yes, a social norm, no? Violation of a social norm. So these are the, or in short, we call this the mechanism. No? Mechanism imposed by society or by the government to prevent the commission of a violation. A violation of the social norm. Okay, I think I have given you already the idea of what deviance is, what sanction is, and what social control means. Clear? So far, now, <clears throat> next would be, of course, when we talk of, uh, call this, uh, when we talk of deviance, we go back to deviance, no? What is deviance again? Well, when we talk of deviance, we are talking about a violation, no? Any behavior, <clears throat> no? So, any behavior any behavior any behavior that what violates social norms no? this is uh, as simple as that no? so uh, any bit but any behavior that violates the keyword there is violates no? any behavior that violates social norms now my question is what are the types no what are the two kinds of <coughs> now the two kinds of deviance no two kinds of deviance no 
when we talk of the kinds, we are talking about the formal deviants. And of course, if this is formal, we have the informal deviants. No? So these are the types of uh, deviants. You have the formal. Well, of course, when you violate a duly enacted or codified law, no? so here written, you have violated a certain rule written rules, just like laws, no? that is formal, no? it's a formal deviance, but if what you have violated is an, in, uh, is an in, uh, what if you have committed an informal deviance, you have committed an unwritten, no? unwritten rule, or uh, unwritten rules, rather, no? <coughs> so here so far, so formal and informal uh, deviant. So these are the two major types or kinds of deviants. Remember that here for formal uh, laws or rules have been violated. Here informal, of course, those that have been duly accepted by society as the norm or the rule. No, so it is unwritten. That is uh, the distinction between the two. Now, next question: uh, How come that people, no, <laughs> violate certain norms or rules, no? Why violate? No? Question. My question here is: Why violate? Why violate social norms, no? <clears throat> what are the theories or what is the reason how come that an individual violates no, certain norms well there are three schools of thought no? <clears throat> there are three schools of thought so let us discuss them one by one from the perspective schools of thought or perspectives no? or perspectives <coughs> all those perspectives no now number one is from the viewpoint of biologists no? from the viewpoint of biologists second from the viewpoint of psychologists and from the viewpoint of what sociologists no? so there are three perspectives being uh, advanced by these three groups. How come that social norms are being violated? Remember that in our society, in our society, even if there are rules, even if there are norms, <coughs> even if there are laws, no, still people violate. No, there are people, there are people who violate these norms, no? So what do you think are the reasons why they these individuals violate certain norms well from the biologists point of view biologists from the biologist point of view how come that individuals violate certain norms well because of aberrant no? something that is abnormal when we talk of aberrant aberrant genetic traits no <clears throat> meaning it could be when we talk of um, genetic we are talking about hereditary no? hereditary no? it might be in your family uh, there is somebody there who may have that uh, cells or what, what is in uh, physical structure that may contain aberrant. Aberrant means abnormal genetic traits, no? And of course, this is coming from biologists who are scientists, no? They advance the view that people violate certain norms as per the biologist's point of view because in their family or in their uh, family circle, there might be individuals there wherein uh, they have also inherited aberrant genetic traits, of course, in the form of 
cells, no? <clears throat> genetic cells. Okay, that is the point of view of the biologist. So you better uh, be careful also with just like say for instance uh, uh, from the viewpoint of science of course uh, if somebody is say for instance having a an abnormal no? abnormal traits or abnormal structure for instance we attribute that to because of genetics or hereditary no? because certain cells have been handed down from your uh, blood uh, blood relatives and they have been handed down to you no? so the abnormality of traits or physical structure would come from your uh, family no? from your family or perhaps relatives even Okay, clear so far? Now, that is the biologist's point of view. Now, but in the case of psychologists, no psychologists, <laughs> point of view or perspective, psychologists, of course, they say that persons violate certain norms, no? they commit violations or they deviate from certain norms because they have this uh, what we call abnormal personality disorders no? abnormal personality disorders no? and where does this disorder come from? well from the mind of course no? and uh, is this uh, <coughs> and of course this might be related to the biologist's point of view that it all concerns about or it comes from what we call genetics. Just like, say for instance, if you have a relative, you know, according to the psychologist's point of view, if you have a relative who is sira ulo, no? who is abnormal, no? abnormal, abnormal mentality, abnormal, no? If you have a relative, for instance, you have a relative who is abnormal mentally, no? Mentally, I mean abnormal mentally. No? They say that, this one, of course, there is a question on your <laughs> mind. There is something that is different from your mind. According to the psychologists, of course, they believe that the violation is due to abnormal personality disorders and this would have something to do with your mind and this mind of course according to them it is also a product of what we call genetics no? genetics again no it's all coming from your relatives just like the biologist's point of view but we are not concerned about with these two schools of thought what we are concerned about is the point of view or the perspective coming from sociologists, you know, the third one. So according to sociologists, according to them, people or individuals violate certain social norms because of external factors. You know, because of external factors meaning uh, they create no or or they exhibit aberrant behavior because of external factors which would come from their environment now this is what we are concerned about in our class no when we talk of deviant behavior we are talking about the psychologist's point of view no, and the psychologist's point of view, of course, will tell us that aberrant behavior or abnormal behavior is actually influenced by external factors. And these external factors, of course, would mainly come from our environment. Here, so far, that one would 
we will be concentrating on that. How come that deviance is performed by certain individuals or certain people? It is because of the demands of their environment. Now, there are four sociological theories. No? There are four sociological theories on deviance. No? And these are, I'd like you to, uh, okay, let us take this up. If we could take this up by tomorrow, we will take this up. The four sociological theories on deviance. But for now, I have given you already the different concepts on deviance, uh, social control, and sanctions. Okay? So, by way of a review, to summarize everything that I have discussed today, when we talk of deviance again, remember this, when we talk of deviance, we are talking about a violation. Violation of what? Of social norms. But, of course, when you violate something, of course, this will result to the imposition of what we call sanctions. And sanctions simply would mean penalties. Diba? Penalties. And of course, in order for society, for the government, to prevent this, to prevent deviance, what do they do? They have to impose certain social control. Social control. And social control would pertain to what we call mechanisms, no? Being undertaken or the ways and means being implemented by society in order to prevent any form of deviance. Okay? So I think that is all for today. Uh, may I remind you again about your quiz tomorrow? Quiz on this, chapter 1 on this, and also your quiz on English grammar. I think I have to give you enough time for uh, to review on chapter 1 and of course chapters 1 to 5 of your grammar group. I think that is all for today. Good afternoon everyone.